Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and if there's one mantra that has guided me through life incredibly well, it is this. Everything is better with Pi. And that also includes Krita. Now what you see in front of you, this is Krita. If you've never heard of it before, hey, I've got something for you to do today because you should be aware of this. Uh, it is a free open source cross-platform, uh, let's say, drawing, sketching, natural media, painting, animation app. Basically, it's a competitor to the likes of uh, Art Rage or Corel Painter. Uh, and if you're trying to just basically digitally draw, like in a traditional media type format, uh, Krita is one you should definitely check out. And it's gotten better and better with every recent release. And one of the more recent releases, well, I think it was 5.0, they added this functionality. If you right click on the canvas in drawing mode, uh, you get this little pie menu and it brings quick access to your tool. It's wonderful, especially if you are working uh, with a traditional stylist type approach. Everything is quickly at hand. And let's just take this new ability and we will add superpower levels. And we're going to actually go beyond that because there's uh, more functionality in this add-on that we're going to be looking at that just kind of gives Krita superpowers. It it's amazing. And quite frankly, if you are on the Krita team, I would highly considering just basically adding this to the core functionality because this is an add-on that I don't think you can live without once you've got it. Uh, it is called... Uh, um, shortcut Composer, it's not much of a name, but what this thing does is quite a bit of impressive stuff. I'm going to show you where you can download it from later on, but basically all you do, download that zip file, you import it this way. Uh, I've already imported it, so I'm not going to showcase that. And then you've got to set it up. In terms of settings, go here into Configure Krita. Uh, this should also work on Mac, but for some reason for me, uh, none of the Pi menus actually work. So it seems like there is a bit of a bug. Uh, in the Mac case, though, the settings are over under the, um, the Application tab instead of under the uh, Settings tab. Once you've got that, basically go to keyboard shortcuts, head on down here, and you're going to see under scripts, you have a number of options here. Shortcut composer, uh, so canvas previews, mouse trackers, multiple assignments, pie menus. Uh, I'm not actually going to cover all of what it does, but I'll showcase where you can learn more about it. I'm going to show you mostly the pie, uh, but we'll also show you some of the mouse tracker stuff because that is also really quite powerful. So let's start off with the pie menu stuff. As you can see here, you get a number of different options here. Uh, the presets, uh, so pick brush presets for those blue, uh, green, and red. Basically, you can figure what goes in each one of these sets yourself. I'll show you where that is later on. But first thing we're going to need to do is actually set up some hotkeys to work with these ones. I'm going to do this very lazily. I did F9, uh, 10, and 11, and then I realized those were the shortcuts for ending my uh, video recording, uh, which was less than ideal. So I'm going to actually go ahead and use Home, uh, Insert, and oops, page up, but I'm actually going to click the thing here before I press page up. All right, so that is the three set of them configured right now. So now what you could do is basically anywhere in the seam, uh, you can just hit one of those keys and it will bring a pop-up menu. And again, here you got your brushes. You can configure which ones you want to work with. So if you want to quickly switch to a paintbrush over there. Now, one of the big things that you're going to find that's different, and in my humble opinion, much nicer uh, with Script Composer over the right-click menu, uh, is right-click menu to select something. You click over, so left-click, pick the thing, right click it. Here, this takes more of the blender approach. So you hold down a hotkey, pick what you want or hover over it and release. That tool is now selected here, selected. Oh, oh that's an eraser. So I'm not really showing you what it can do. Uh, and so on. So basically just head on over, pick the tool you want. And then we got the other sets of menus here. Uh, this one is for uh, different brush modes, I believe. So here you can see different options right there. And then we've got this one here for the various different eraser options. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, you can actually configure what these things do. So they're under the uh, script section here, and you can go into configure shortcut composer. So all of the various different options, you can do what red, green, and blue actually define. So instead of erasers, if you want, uh, you could have it do a pixel art setting. So blue, I forget which one I've got applied to blue, uh, but there we go. So we can do the various different pixel art settings. Now, the one little bit of feedback I would love to add if the developer can do this is to do tool tips. So it actually tells me what each one of these things actually is. Because uh, as a bit of a... Um, more of a noob when it comes to using uh, Krita. I'm not immediately recognizing all the icons. So if there was a, uh, you know, pop-up tool tip for each one of these things, that would be a lovely addition. But as you can see, uh, you can switch between the various different profiles for these Pi menus. Now we looked at half of the Pi menus. Let's go look at the other ones that come out of the box. Again, you go back to configure Krita, you go to keyboard shortcuts, and then down here, we'll just reassign the same ones we did. So open up the Pi menu. And then over here, you're going to see... Uh, Again, I'm just going to use the same hotkeys, so we'll overwrite and reassign the next three sets. Oops. Again, uh, actually click on the custom before you go ahead and change things. And yeah, we'll reassign. And then once again here. So those are my three now defined. And as you see, you have a different set of Pi menus available to you. Uh, 
And as you've got the key held down, it's like a toggle, so it pops it up while the key is held. Uh, it does make it so that you basically just have this, this quick tap in out kind of workflow and everything is centered around your brush. And once again, when you go to the thing, it is automatically selected based off what you have most over. It's a much faster workflow. So you can see how we're gonna work with the editor. So if I wanna switch to add mode, basically I'm holding down my home key at this point in time. And now we are in add mode here, again, multiply mode instead. So quick switching between the various different options. And then over here, you've got like even just the deformations are available right here. Uh, so you got the various different uh, deform modes available to you. Um, not working quite well uh, in this case for my demo, but uh, that is the other thing you've got going on. You can also have it do, um, you got tools for selection handling and so on. But one of the other really neat things with this tool, I uh, was same kind of setup. So it's a key on setting. So again, back into configure Krita. This one isn't Pi menu related. So what we could do now, uh, let's go over here. Keyboard shortcuts going to come down here and you have the mouse trackers. And these are basically when you hold down a key, whichever key you define uh, and then move the mouse, it will handle. So I'm only going to show you one, but you can use it to do things like flip between layers or um, flip back and forth in the timeline. You can even have it so that I could hold down a key and then move the mouse and it will actually undo, like hitting control Z over and over and again, or go the other direction to redo what you were doing. So undo and redo stack based off movement, but I'll showcase this one probably with this guy because uh, it has the most power. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll redefine the insert key here as that hot key. So reassign that one and we are good to go. So now if I hold down the insert key, what I do with my mouse. So the key thing here is look at opacity and size. So these are things that you're constant when you're uh, doing editing, you're gonna constantly be tweaking the size of the brush, maybe the size of the eraser, whatever you're working with. So now what you do is with that keyboard held down, the direction you go with your mouse. So see the opacity up and down, the opacity drops up and down, left and right, oops, sorry, left and right, size. So that's what these mouse trackers enable you to do. Basically toggle a key, move the mouse, it kind of changes a range value on the scroll. Again, this combination of between these new additional uh, mouse wheel supports and then these mouse trackers that quick change settings. Again, up here, as I move, you're seeing it there. I'll undo it left and right, and you're seeing it changes your brush size. Really, really going to speed up your workflow, especially if you are uh, stylus based. And honestly, I don't see any downside to having this functionality built into uh, Krita directly, because I do think that this is kind of a game changer. It does give sort of a UI superpower layer to this tool. It's, it's kind of one of the best plugins I have seen out there, in my opinion. And I'm curious what you ultimately think of it. So again, I'm only kind of scratching the surface of what this plugin can do. There are a number of other settings there. You've got uh, multiple select groups, so you can put things in a group together. If you want to learn more about all of this stuff, uh, there is a video out here. I will have this in the linked article and directly linked in the comment down below. Uh, this video doesn't have as many views as it should. It's only 14, 1500 views on it right now. So let's try and bump that one up. If you're interested in checking out this tool, do be sure to check this video. It goes through all of the stuff. So setting up the pies, going through layers, and then we've got some stuff that I'm not covering. So again, like the undo with mouse scrolling. Uh, then we've got also the ability to do uh, multiple assignments to a single key. So you can do uh, like each time you tap the key, it will toggle between those different settings. So here you can see it's using the different selection based tools. This guy really changes the way that you do um, your work in Krita, including, again, we also have uh, temporary assignments here. There is some real magical stuff that this plugin can do. I think what I showcased to you already, you can probably see why this would be appealing. Now, by the way, there are some requirements for this guy. Uh, first off, obviously, you're going to need Krita, uh, and it is available for a Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Again, if you've never checked out Krita before, this is what you should spend your afternoon doing. Honestly, it is a heck of a lot of fun. And the key thing here is to use this plugin if you have already got Krita installed. Make sure you are running at least 5.1.0 or higher. I do have to, again, point out, unfortunately, it did not work on my M1-based Mac. Hopefully, it will work fine for you. I did download 5.1.5. My big issue that I found is that it wasn't doing... So when I actually picked something, when I let go of the mouse, it wasn't actually doing the selection, which really kind of ruined the mouse functionality. Uh, hopefully that bug is fixed soon. But obviously you're going to need Krita, again, available for all the major platforms, and it is open source project. And of course you are going to need Shortcut Composer. This is a GitHub project. It is under the GPL3 license, which I think is the same license that Krita itself is developed under, which means the Krita team could literally just lift this and put this into the core Krita themselves. And I, again, I highly recommend it because this just makes Krita that much better. And I, I don't think I'm exaggerating. This is a wonderful tool. Again, I do love that Krita added this here. And I also, to be honest, I like the way that uh, script, oh, sorry, not script, shortcut composer works here. Uh, 
as opposed to the way that this wheel works. I like the uh, hover over select functionality that it's got. Um, so I would highly recommend checking that one out uh, and if you're on the core team. I do like the, the UI or the workflow of Shortcut Composer better than the built-in crit away, but I do love this move towards the wheel support. It does keep everything right around your cursor and works wonderfully if you are using a stylus. So if you want to go ahead and grab this guy, again, head on over to GitHub. I will have this linked in the linked article down below. Um, and we will just go ahead, download the zip file, and then in order to install it, simply go here to, uh, again, uh, no, settings, uh, and then where did you go? Install, install, no, 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 it's tools, sorry, sc tools, script, import Python plugin from file. And again, all the settings are here under configure settings. Uh, and yeah, that is it. This is Shortcut uh, Composer. Highly recommend checking it out. It is, again, just released uh, two days ago. Uh, it's being somewhat frequently updated. The author has done a wonderful job. And again, if you are going to check it out, I would recommend checking out this video. I will link this directly below. Uh, one question I have a lot is why don't I always directly link to stuff? Well, I can safely link to another YouTube video uh, because I, it's, well, it's YouTube. Uh, what, ha what happens is if I link to something like uh, a GitHub page and it gets taken over and it used to say host malware at some point in the future, I can get a channel or a copyright strike for that. So I do not touch external links other than stuff I really trust or um, again, non-dynamic content or game from scratch itself. So if you're wondering why I don't directly link out to stuff, it is their policy uh, at YouTube that basically I'm responsible for everything I link to. And the fact that the web is a temporal thing and what I link to may not be the same in a week or two. Yeah, it's just not worth it to me. I got a strike on it uh, or at least a warning of a strike on it in the past. And that's why that linking policy exists. So quick explanation there. Anyways, that ladies and gentlemen is Shortcut Composer, a tool that in my humble opinion does improve Krita greatly. It gives it some uh, UI superpowers, some new capabilities and features of functionality. And I think it kind of changes the way that it works. And it changes the way that it works in such a good way that I honestly think the creative team should consider making this core feature or functionality or incorporating it in some way, either emulating the functionality that this provides or just adding it in directly, which is the nice thing about open source projects. All right, let me know what you think. Uh, have you checked out Shortcut Composer? Do you use Krita? Are you going to check it out? All these things, comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.